Hey there, and welcome to the Uke Stuff channel, and welcome to this Uke Guide review of the Ohana Vita, their VKC concert scale replica ukulele, a vintage sort of Vita remake. Now, if you don't know anything about the Vita, it goes back between the years of 1927 and 1930. There was a company in Chicago called Harmony that made tons of ukuleles, and you can still buy them used. They're out there of different types of harmonies. This was originally one of the harmony instruments, and they came up with the idea, and they approached one of the great ukulele artists of the time, sort of the Jake Shimabukuru of their time, Roy Smack, and said, hey Roy, would you be willing to put your name on these? And ultimately, Roy said, sure, I'll do that if you pay me. And he grew in popularity even after vaudeville into the movies, and of course, uh, Harmony did very well at their Vita Ukes. Now today, Vita ukuleles from that period of 1927 to 1930 are sought after. And one of my friends in the ukulele world, Pete McCarty, actually has one. He bought one a couple of years ago through a connection with my other friend, Ookster Brown. So with that in mind, let me show you a couple pictures here. You can see that Pete's is decorated with a palm tree on it, but you can see the shape and how it's very similar to this Ohana, with the difference being um, number one, age. Number two, that one is solid wood. But then this one has less defined seal holes. It was an interesting whole deal. There were a whole line of instruments that sort of shared this shape, sort of mandolin-like. But ultimately, probably the ukulele is the one that's best known. And it was named after the Vita Projector, which was a state-of-the-art projector that allowed a movie to be shown sync with sound, not with voices, not with speaking, but just with sound. So that was a way for them to connect the Vita ukuleles and the other instruments back to the Vita projector, which was owned by the owner of the Harmony Instrument Company. So that's the history of the instrument, and Ohana, a number of years ago, I don't even know how long ago, um, decided that amongst their vintage replicas that they make, they would include the Vita, and I'm really glad they did. And ultimately, this is one of the ukuleles that was on my uh, bucket list, so to say, of ukuleles that I wanted because, again, it's so special. Now, truthfully, if you offered me a 1928 Harmony Made Vita Roy Smeck Vita ukulele, would I take it? The answer is yes. But I don't think I'd want to buy one myself because I'd be a little too concerned about damaging it. Um, I would much prefer to have this one that I have no intention of damaging, but if something would happen to it, it's replaceable in your mind. You can still get it, um, and it's not incredibly expensive. So um, ultimately, I'm so, so happy to bring this instrument to you, and I'm so glad that Ohana sent it to me to review for you because, again, it is an instrument that I, I love. Now, maybe that's a warning. Maybe you say, hey, wait a second, this review is skewed because he already liked that instrument. Well, I can tell you that after living with it for a while, um, there's a reason why it is great and why so many people like this. I was looking on Mims Ukes. If you don't know Mims Ukes, she's one of the, the world's leading ukulele specialists in terms of selling. And in her listings for the Vita, she mentions how this instrument is so popular, not only because of its shape, but its sound. So we'll get into all that in this review. Now, these reviews are lengthy. I don't apologize for that. You have the power of the internet in your hands. So at the bottom of the screen, you'll see chapters where you can jump to different parts of this video that matter to you or that you want to see. And you'll also see them linked in the description below. Ultimately, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about really subjective things about the instrument. Then I'm going to go over the specifications of the instrument. And then I'll summarize it, including giving it a Uke Guide score of between zero and five ukuleles. So let's begin with cost. The list price is $349. That's pretty expensive, but list prices are seldom the actual price. Mims Uke sells these right now for $209, and I think that's right, really the going street price for this concert version. There are some blemishes that she will occasionally sell. Occasionally, there'll be an instrument that doesn't come that meets Ohana's exacting standards, and they'll sell them sometimes to dealers to sell as blemished units, and those are often marked a few dollars off. So occasionally, you'll see these with a few dollars off, too, Either way, you're probably around $200 to $210 right now. Could that price go up? Sure, but that's where we're at in December of 2020. Now, when it comes to value, it's kind of a tricky proposition because this is sort of a niche or niche instrument. 
not everybody is going to be attracted to this. Now, on the positive side, Ohana has a whole bunch of options if you like vintage instruments. So that all said, you've got to keep the cost of this in mind. $209 is getting on the expensive side for what's a laminate with a solid top. But then again, you're dealing with sort of a rare instrument. There are some custom makers that make a Vita replica these days, but no other mass manufacturers make one of these. So it kind of has a market all of its own. What I'm going to say is it actually falls a little below value because what it's lacking, and this will be one of the main criticisms of the instrument, which isn't even about the instrument itself, is that you don't get a bag, a gig bag, or a case with this. Now, they do sell them, and you can buy them. Uh, they're about $70 plus shipping, or if you can find it without, but right around there, around $70 for a hard case for one of these. But that's an additional $70 on the purchase of the instrument that you sort of have to plan for because a regular gig bag really isn't going to work with this one. So with that in mind, it because so many other ukuleles are coming with a gig bag these days, that knocks the value just a little below the price. If, if this came with a gig bag, soft gig bag that fit it and kept it generally protected, then the value would actually go above the price. So it's it's really hampered by the lack of a case or a bag. And that's true, I believe, of most of Ohana's products is that if you want a case or a bag for it, you buy it separately. So it's something that perhaps Ohana needs to look at as a whole at their product line as they move forward, considering what the competition is doing in so many different areas. Now, as for build quality, it is really well built. Tuners are straight. Um, the finish, while it's that, and we'll talk about that later in the specifications, while it's sort of a flat satin finish, um, there's no flaws in it. The binding is super well done. Uh, the purfling in it is is spot on. You know, the, the wood itself is, you know, flawless in terms of both laminate and the spruce top. So it's it's flawless, basically, on the outside. And let's go take a look at what it looks like on the inside. All right, let's take a look inside the Vita. Here we go. Bridge pin guides. I can remember when I didn't know what those were, but they use those guides to place it. And you can see that the bridge support goes most of the way through. There appears to be no brace down the lengthwise top of the ukulele. So there's no fan bracing or anything. There's just some lengthwise bracing. You can see the tail block, so you're okay to put in a strap button. And then just regular, you know, kerfing. It's not notched. And what's funny is that in so many cases we're taught that um, for an instrument to be good, it needs to have notch kerfing. But here's the case where Ohana just uses non-notch kerfing. Uh, you also have situations like Koloha where they don't use any kerfing whatsoever. So um, that's it. It's very clean. There's no glue mess whatsoever um, at all. Very clean build. So let's go take a look at the upper bout or what part exists of the upper bout on a pear-shaped ukulele. All right, I can't get too far back here, but there you can see the top. A little bit of glue there, finally. That very small amount of that bell on the top, you can see there's the uh, support under the neck, the neck block. And you can see you've got, again, your straight kerfing and, and one of the horizontal braces on the ukulele. And you can see part of one of the sound holes peeking through. But that's pretty much it. So very simple, clean build. Again, a little different than any of the other models we've looked at. So that's our look at the Ohana VKC-70 ukulele. All right, so that's what it looks like on the inside. Super clean with only a couple glue drops way up at the top and again in areas that you'll never see. So really, really well made. The build quality is exceptional. Now what I don't know and what I need to do a little more research about is again that whole idea of notch kerfing. We always sell that notch kerfing is better. So for example, Kala sells their Makala, uh, let's just say their Makala concert. And then they also sell their KAC. And one of the major differences of the KAC is that it has notch kerfing on the inside, whereas the Makala just has straight kerfing on the inside. So I need to just do some more research on that. And it just makes you question, 
why Ohana doesn't have that done as well. I just don't know yet. And I'll, I'll perhaps I'll even ask the company and ask that question. But when I do the review on the BKT, the baritone body tenor scale instrument, maybe I'll have an answer for you about that. Now, in terms of appearance, it's all about the body here. It's all about the pear shape and the seals or the mildly, you know, it sort of looks like a Christmas cookie that, you know, you, you do the seal, but then you bake it and it doesn't quite turn out. I imagine there are some reasons why they couldn't do an exact tight seal. But even so, it's all about the body. And that alone kind of makes it look like a sad person a little bit, doesn't it? Like that. But anyway, um, you know, you have just that little bit of a tail there, which is nice. And, um, you know, you've got your sort of Martin-esque headstock. But it has some really nice features. The double sound hole, the body shape. You've got the purfling. Uh, it's black, white, black. You've got the binding on the side. And um, yeah, so it has some appointments, you know, in terms of what you're looking at and what you're getting. So that, that kind of adds to the value of that price too, because you are getting a few features. The body shape, probably the most important of those features. That said, you're either going to love this or you're not going to like it. I happen to love it. If you want one of these, there's a number of ways to get them. Uh, the way that I would probably suggest to you is through one of Ohana's uh, super dealers like Mims Ukes or the Uke Republic, where they will do a setup for you just to make sure that everything's spot on. Although we'll talk about it, this one came to me set up very, very well. Now in terms of playability, over the last few weeks, I've said this over and over again, but this is a very standard 35 millimeter nut instrument with traditional 35 millimeter spacing. And if anything, perhaps the neck is a little chunkier and a little more round than usual. So if you're a person with giant hands, you're not going to like that. The action was spot on, really nice action, so no concerns there. It originally didn't have any sharp fret ends. However, after living in my house, even with a humidifier for a couple weeks, some fret ends started to sprout, so I dealt with those, so there are no sharp fret ends right now. But just so you know, if it happens in my house, it could happen in yours, and that could happen with any ukulele. So just keep that in mind. It arrived without any sharp fret ends, just the wonderful Wisconsin slash Minnesota winter weather and heat inside of houses uh, did its trick on the neck, even humidified. As long as you're okay with a 35 millimeter nut, the one thing I would say is I would encourage Ohana to consider for future models to change the neck profile just a touch to make things a little less round and a little more flat. And I think that buyers and players would appreciate that a little bit. It's, it's really rounded. And that's true of the different Ohana ukuleles that I own, um, that I've even owned previous to the two that I was sent to review. So that would be, I think, my encouragement is to change that neck profile just a touch. And I think it would make a world of difference for players. Now, in terms of sound quality, wow. You have to like bright, okay? If you have this ukulele, you have to like a sound that's bright and in your face because that's what it is. Um, the talking point of these Vitas is that they just resonated so well due to the body shape. Who knows why? I mean, I can even hear it echoing as I, as I talk near it. Um, it's just ringing as I talk. So it's very, very resonant. Um, you know, you can actually hear the pitch as you tap it. That doesn't happen with every ukulele. So it's a very resonant, very bright ukulele. That doesn't mean it doesn't have any dark characteristic. And in fact, that laminate probably does uh, sort of mellow it a bit. So one of my suggestions also for this model is I would love to see one of these offered with a solid back and solid sides of mahogany or some other wood. I just love to see what it would sound like. I, I just wonder how much more would that bring to the table with this instrument? Maybe they tried it and they said, no, you know what? The, the gains weren't that much, but um, just that's what I would like to see with it. So it's very bright, very ringy, and that's even with Aquila Nile gut strings on it. Eventually, I'm probably gonna switch to Martin M600s because that's what I like to play with, or fluorocarbons in general, and I'm curious to see where that will go with that. I don't know, and I may not like it and need to bring it back to something like Worth Browns if it gets too bright. So we'll see. But very bright. It's not ringy yet. Again, I think partially because of the, the Super Nile Gut strings. But the Super Nile Gut strings work well with this. I, I don't really have much of a complaint either. So that's why I said eventually I'll change to Martins. 
probably when it's time to change, but I don't have any plans to do that yet. Otherwise, the volume is, of course, really loud, the tone is more bright, and there is pretty decent sustain. So I think it has really good sound, as long as you're not looking for something with mellowness in it as well. So one of the things I like to do is let you see what I'm hearing. So I like to use the app Tonal Energy Tuner to let you actually sort of have a visualization of what I'm seeing. So I play the C chord or the G chord on baritone, and I just let you see what I'm hearing. So you'll see the initial strike of the chord, and then you'll see what happens with the sustain. Here we go. Yeah, so you can see a sustain all over the spectrum, which is something that you don't often see on ukulele. All right, now that we've talked about the subjective issues with the instrument, let's talk about the specifications. It is a concert scale instrument, and its scale length is 15.125 inches from nut to saddle. I did ask Pete McCarty, who owns that original Vita, what scale he was looking at, and it was definitely a soprano instrument. I think it landed somewhere in between soprano and concert and scale length, but this one is clearly at the concert scale length. Ohana does make a soprano version of this as well. The instrument has 14 frets, only 14 frets, and they end right at the body. It does have side position markers and front position markers, and the body is pear-shaped. Again, some people say mandolinish shape, but even Ohana lists it as a pear. The soundboard is made out of solid spruce, and the back and sides are made out of laminate mahogany. Again, I'd love to see one of these made out of solid mahogany, like the original ones. Now, when it comes to the fretboard, Ohana lists these as hardwood. That may give them some wiggle room, because there may be some of these that are old stock, but still new, that have the walnut fretboards during that time period where there were restrictions on rosewood fretboards. But to me, this looks like rosewood, fretboard, and bridge. It is not a radius fretboard. It is totally flat. The nut and saddle are listed as bone. The saddle is not compensated, and I should mention that the bridge is a tie bar bridge. Now, the finish of this is a flat satin, and one of my suggestions is that I'd love to see one of these in gloss. The overall length from the top of the instrument to the bottom is 23.25 inches, and it weighs only 15.6 ounces for a concert. That's pretty amazing. The tuners are open geared tuners that work just fine. You know, the Ohana puts on pretty decent tuners. And the action came really well set up. 0.25 millimeters at the first fret and 2.25 millimeters at the 12th fret. So that's really quite good. The nut width is 34.90 millimeters, so just about 35 millimeters, and the spacing between the strings at the first fret was 8.91 millimeters between each string for a total gap of 28.75 millimeters G to A. So that's all pretty standard. The measurement that was on the larger side was the depth at the third fret was 21.85 from the top of the strings to the bottom of the neck, which is pretty chunky. So with this instrument, one of the things, again, that I would suggest is perhaps a thinner profile neck in the future. All right, now that we've looked at all the specifications for the instrument, let's summarize it. Ohana brings you this ukulele via the history of the Harmony Instrument Company and Roy Smek, the Wizard of the Strings, and the Roy Smek Vita ukulele that was made by Harmony between 1927 and 1930. It's really kind of a cool piece of history, and it's cool that Ohana still offers it today. It is 93 years later as I am recording this video, and this body shape still has a lot of potential. It is really a little powerhouse of an ukulele and highly resonant, highly bright. So if you're looking for an instrument to just cut through something, this is it. This thing will cut through anything. So it has a solid spruce top, the cool seal sound holes, and a laminate back and sides. It's a really wonderful instrument, and the price point is its own, but I would love to see a gig bag included, maybe even if it costs just a little bit more, and I'd love to see a modernized neck profile. That all said, I love this. I love it a ton, and I very, very much recommend it.
So, what rating would I give it between a scale of 0 and 5 ukuleles? What really becomes a twist here is that what impacts the rating the most is the fact that it doesn't include a gig bag. I know again that you can buy one, but when you have a unique shaped instrument like this, the consumer would be helped out even if it added to the price a little bit to balance out. So considering that so many ukuleles come with a kit and everything else, probably time for this to come with one too. So I'm going to rate this 4.5 ukuleles. You could also rate it 4.5 because it is so bright and some people are going to be bothered by the brightness. And you could also rate it 4.5 because it does sort of have to appeal to you to want to buy and want to own. It's a really, really nice tribute to the history of the ukulele with a little bit of a modern take. And finally, in closing, again, thank you to Ahana for letting me review this. This is really nice. And again, this is one of the instruments that was on my bucket list of instruments. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a great day. And I will be back soon with some more uke stuff for you.